let's talk about the plant chamomilla because it's been used since ancient times, uh, at least since Roman times, and uh, always specifically as a, as a remedy for mothers and children, which explains the, its uh, ancient name, matricaria. Matricaria means, you know, mother's herb, more or less. The Greeks came up with uh, candy, which is ground apple, and then melon, which is apple. Yeah. It's, it's called that because of the way that it, it looks. Uh, the, heavy, the heavy tip of the flower sort of falls to the ground. It looks, I guess, for some people like an apple. So. It also has a very sweet smell. Can you touch the green? The, the, the head of the flower. No, actually the plant before it flowers. If you touch uh -huh. it, it's very, um, it's almost like a sweet apple kind of smell. Other names are uh, mayweed. Sun's Bride, and uh, it's one of the herbs that answers to the name feverfew. So you you all know what the composite look like. The the prototypic one is is uh, daisy, you know. So it's got the the yellow or white um, flower petals in the yellow center. They're very typical look. And uh, it starts out sort of a flat center with these tiny little, they're called compositates because they have composite flowers. It's not one flower. Each one of those flowers is actually a composite flower. And each one of those little yellow pieces in the center is its own flower, uh, specialized. And then the petals along the edge are specialized flowers that have larger petals on the outside. So this composite head is at first flat, and then as the flower matures, it sort of bulges out as it, as, uh, it becomes, I guess pregnant is the word, as it becomes fertilized. The head bulges out, and the petals sort of arch backwards and then fall off, and it leaves this large bulbous composite head which then sort of leans over on uh, heavier than the stem can support. It leans over and it falls against the ground and it's called the ground apple or uh, what have you. It has a hollow center. This, this, uh, this bulbous head has a very, a very large hollow center. And uh, many authors through the history of homeopathy have talked about from the, from the standpoint of, uh, of uh, the law of signatures, from the idea of the law of signatures, it, uh, people have commented how the, the petals sort of arch back, like the chamomilla baby wants to arch backward, you know, during its during its pain, so you can think of it that way. Uh, the plant is used uh, uh, agriculturally, it's used to make the soil healthier. It inhibits the growth of nematodes in the soil because of some of the alkaloids it produces. And therefore it helps neighboring plants to stay healthy. It's also known to absorb lime particularly well out of the soil. And of course, Chamomilla is considered the acute rem for calcarea carbonica, so there should be a strong relationship. You know, it absorbs the calcium from the lime particularly well. Notice all of the remedies in this group which have to do with injury. Bellus perennis, arnica, calendula is in this group. We said echinacea is in this group. And so injury is one of the strong components of the whole group of the composite. And we'll see that injury has a great deal to do with, with the remedy chamomilla. You could say this is one of the most plant-like of all the plant remedies. It's, it has exquisite sensitivity to touch, to noise, odor, light, but especially to pain. Chamomilla is considered one of the strongest remedies for tremendous sensitivity to pain. And so we see it used in all sorts of painful conditions, especially famous for otitis media, for earaches, 
for neuralgias, in labor, you know, in delivery. So any place where the body feels that pain exquisitely, then chamomilla is liable to be involved in the treatment. They're sensitive to injuries. It's one of the remedies that we use to treat people during burns for stings, insect stings, and so forth, for fractures, any sort of injury where the most important characteristic is the severe pain and also emotional pain. So Kali is actually derived from the Arabic word Kali, meaning ash. So it's potassium or potash. It's the remains of burnt vegetable matter. The seventh most common element on Earth. And it has a very close relationship to sodium. On the periodic table, they're all in column one, and there's sodium, and the next one down is potassium. And sodium occurs mostly in liquid form, in the sea, in other words, in the fluids, whereas potassium is really found in the soil and in the plants. It's an important constituent of colloid material. In other words, of more or less closer to the solid phase. So potassium is found inside the cell and sodium is found outside the cell. And their interrelationship is very important. And especially the presence of these two things on opposite sides of the cell membrane allow for the movement of nerve impulses. So the intracellular potassium is very important in muscle contractility and in the generation of impulses in the nervous system. And it also seems that there is a um, relationship especially with the vagus nerve. Potassium stimulates the vagus nerve and stimulation of the vagus nerve activates the flow of potassium ions. And the vagus nerve is of interest here, especially because it connects with the solar plexus. Yes. And the solar plexus in some way is the uh, receiving dish for uh, certain sorts of energies, especially those related to the emotions. And those of you who have done your homework will know that Cali carbonicum is especially sensitive in the area of the solar plexus. So the fundamental idea in Cali carbonicum, it's hard to express in a single word or a sentence, but it can be encompassed by a few yes. concepts. They're moral. They have definite ideas about right and wrong. Family. And outside of family, there is the group. There's the idea of tradition, of conservatism, of duty, and of responsibility. Moral. Right, wrong, family, tradition.
tradition, duty, and responsibility. On this note, it's really interesting to see the rubrics anarchist, revolutionary. And you'll see that Kalei Cobb is there. And of course, anarchy is what? An absence of law and order. Yeah. So this sort of really emphasizes the polarity. The remedy for sort of revolutionary and stuff is actually causticum. And causticum is a kali. Causticum is a kali. It's good to remember that. So how do we understand while well, we're just on this note?